Hey, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Today we are going to be doing that valve lash adjustment on a 3.5 liter Honda engine in this 06 Odyssey here. This procedure is going to be very similar across the board on Honda's 3.5 liter. Things to note right in the beginning here, engine stone cold. This thing sat overnight. We want to be adjusting these engines cold. As an engine warms up, everything expands. It's going to change our valve lash adjustment. So we want to start it cold. Another thing I just wanted to mention, Milwaukee was nice enough to send us out some new tools, their newest half inch impact. This thing's putting out 1400 foot pounds of torque. This thing is insane. I don't even use air tools anymore. This is my go-to. Um, I haven't used my half inch air impact since I got my hands on this thing. This new one key one also, I don't have to use a torque stick with anymore. With the push of a button, I can set this thing up for lug nut mode. So when I'm torquing down a lug nut, this thing will preset the torque somewhere between 80 and 130 foot pounds. And then I grab the torque wrench and finalize the torque on that wheel. So no more, uh, no more torque stick on here. We have really good repeatability with this thing. So thank you to Milwaukee for sh shipping this thing out. This thing is phenomenal. I already have our right front wheel on here ripped off. We got to take the wheel off because we want to go through the wheel well to get on the crank pulley because we're going to have to spin this engine over by hand to get the camshafts in the proper place for the adjustment. We want to adjust our valves on this engine, our exhaust valves most likely, on this engine when they're not engaged by the camshaft. Does that make sense? We want to do it when they're not being pushed down, when they're not being opened. They have to be closed. That's when we're going to get that, that lash in between there that we're going to measure. So this is a multiple hour job. Um, book time for a technician is 4.3 hours to do this job. If you're a DOI or doing this thing at home with hand tools and that kind of thing, expect this to take a weekend, most likely. Um, it, is, it is a big job. You know, we got to rip the intake manifold off, both valve covers. It is an involved job. So. Uh, Without further ado, I think um, let's get right into this thing. Um, obviously, we're not going to be on video here for four hours, so I will speed up some of the uh, monotonous parts, um, but anything that, that pops up, we will definitely talk about. So let's do it. Hang on. Okay, so getting right into it again, we're going to have to rip off our upper intake plenum, both valve covers, and everything that's in the way. So let's start off with our air filter assembly here, our air intake snorkel. Now, like I've showed in the past, I don't like leaving the uh, intake manifold open like this. So, some painter's tape across the ports here will save you from any question when it's time to put this thing back together if anything had fallen down inside of here.
Okay, so one, two, three, four, five bolts holding this cover on. And off it comes. And we do have new, uh, new gaskets for this thing. It's always a good idea to go replacing gaskets when you uh, do something like this, because this gasket is pretty, pretty beat up, pretty old. It's cracked, it's dry, part of it broke off. It's still stuck to the head here. Um, so yeah, gaskets are getting replaced. All right, let's take a good look at what, we, uh, what we're looking at here. So as you can tell, we have this side of the engine, which intake ports, these are, this is our intake camshaft that runs here. Well, this is only a single camshaft, so it's riding on the intake lobes right here. So these uh, six valves right there, two valves, two valves, two valves per cylinder, these are all intake cam. And then this side of our engine is our exhaust cam, which makes sense, right? Right over by the exhaust manifold that's sitting down here. So what we're going to adjust is these on our intake cam and then these on our exhaust cam. We're going to loosen this nut and we're going to take a screwdriver like so and we're going to spin these in or out to adjust that lash. All right. So the only thing though that I haven't mentioned yet is how do we know where to set the camshaft on this thing for which cylinder it is that we're working on? Because remember, we have to have our cam set in the right spot so we can adjust the valves properly. Well, luckily on Hondas, according to our service information here, there is a cover that sits on our front cover here that we can pull off. And there's like a sight window here that's going to line up and there's going to be a number right on there. Let's see if I can show you guys. Okay. So as we spin the engine around, our goal here is to line up this little notch right there with the line and the corresponding cylinder that we want to adjust first. Now, on our Honda 3.5, these engines are going to sit, it's one, two, three on the back, four, five, six, if you look at the diagram here. This thing is uh, put together like a Ford engine with um, all three of the same matching cylinders all on the same bank. So as we spin this engine over, if we want to start with this cylinder right here, we're going to bar this motor over. So we'll get this thing perfectly aligned. That looks great. Again, we're just trying to align that line on the cover, this black line on the cover in there with the line on the face of the camshaft sprocket. For six, we're going to be adjusting this cylinder right here, or this uh, yeah, cylinder right here. And I can feel a tiny bit of play in our rocker arm on the exhaust and uh, more play, I would say, on our intake cam. You can see as I kind of wiggle here that I do have some play. And if you listen really close, there's some rocking in these. So our exhaust valves do feel tighter. And again, our specs for exhaust are 11 to 13 thousandths of an inch and our intake are eight to nine thousandths of an inch. So our intake valves are supposed to be a little bit tighter than our exhaust valves. All right, let's check the intake valves first, which again are gonna be these guys. Let's grab a flashlight and get that back over here. So these guys are intake valves. Let's check them first. Spec was eight to nine thousand. So that's 0 0.008 to 0 0.009. Um, let's start with the nine thousand. So uh, you guys probably aren't gonna be able to read that, but maybe 0 0.009. And we're gonna try and get this thing in between the top of the valve and our um, rocker arm here, this adjusting piece. And we want to feel a little bit of drag in here, but we, we don't want it to be loose and we don't want it to not be able to fit. So at a 9,000 gap, 
I don't have any more play in here. I can't move this at all. It doesn't move. You can hear it's not knocking anymore. Back and forth. This one seems pretty good. Let's, let's run that 8,000th in there quick and see what that feels like. So under 8,000, there is a little bit of movement as I wiggle this thing. And it does feel pretty, um, still a little bit of drag, but I can feel a little movement where we have a little bit of slack in there at 8,000. But our spec is 8 to 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run with the larger spec. I'm going to run with the 9,000 on this because we kind of already think or we are thinking that our cylinder head is being impacted. The valve is coming into the bottom of the head and taking up slack. So I'm going to plan to adjust these things to a thicker feeler gauge, to a, a larger gap. So at 9,000 I have a decent drag in here. It's not tight but it's not loose. I don't have play in between the the valve and the um, feeler gauge. Our intake valve is in spec on here. That looks good. Let's check our exhaust valve. And now again, we're 11 to 13 thousandths. So I'm going to start with that 13 because again, I want to adjust this thing a little bit tighter, uh, excuse me, a little bit looser because we want to plan for this engine basically getting tighter over time. So we're going to go on these guys right here and see if we can fit our feeler gauge in between here. And it looks like our feeler gauge is at a bad angle here. Looks like we're going to have to bend it. So I'm having a really, really hard time getting this in between here. It is not fitting in there, which we expected, right? We expected our valve to be tight. We did not expect to be able to fit a feeler gauge in between these two surfaces. So let's go ahead and let's drop this down a little. Let's go down to a, let's try a five and see what that seems like. Now the exhaust cam does seem a little bit harder to check on these. Again, we'll put a bend in our feeler gauge. We also have to remember this engine right now is stone cold, so our tolerances are only going to continue to get tighter as this engine warms. And I still, I can't get this five, oh, there we go. I got a 5,000 through. It's just tricky to get these in here. But there we go, 5,000. And I have a slight, slight amount of play, meaning we have a little bit extra room in there. Let's try a seven. And again, guys, it doesn't really matter where it was before. I just want to know where it was before for testing purposes um, to see how far out of spec this was when we started. But for you guys doing this at home or doing this in the garage, um, as soon as the, the 12 or 13,000 didn't fit in there, it's time to loosen that jam nut. And uh, adjust it. Alright, so I can get a 7 through and that's nice and snug between there with a good amount of drag. So that tells me exactly what we expected. At 7,000 of an inch our exhaust valves are tightened, meaning they have taken up slack, meaning we have wear basically impacted into the bottom of the cylinder head. We need to increase our gap on our exhaust side back to that 11 to 13 thousandths of an inch. Now, like I said, I want to go a little bit 
wider of a gap on here because we are expecting the valves to tighten, so I'm going to run to that 13 thousandth of a gap. So let's grab a 10 millimeter wrench and a flat blade screwdriver. And we'll loosen up our lock nut. There we go. So our lock nut's nice and loose. And then we'll get a smaller screwdriver. We will back this off. And I'm gonna go, we'll go one full turn and see where that leaves us. So I'm one full turn back. And now I can get our 13,000. 13 thou in between there. Now I want to, with my feeler gauge in there, I'm going to start to run this back in. Now we don't want to tighten this adjuster down to where you can see I went one full turn back and now my feeler gauge in here is completely stuck. I can't get it back out. That's because we went too tight. So we want uh, to feel just a small amount of drag on here as we adjust. I think that feels pretty good right there. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna hold the adjuster in place with the screwdriver and I'm gonna lock it down with my wrench. Like so. And let's see what we've got. So again, we want a little bit of drag on here, but we don't want it tight, but we also don't want it to be loose. So let's see if we have play on this one now. All right, so it is a little bit loose. We have play in here. Time to loosen it back up and readjust. We're gonna tighten it down a little bit. I'm gonna go a quarter of a turn. See how that feels. Okay, we got our play out. Again, holding it in place. And snugging it down. Let's see what we've got now. All right, we got our drag. That feels good. And no more play in there at all. So our first valve on our exhaust cam is adjusted. We have a good amount of play in there, or it feels like more play than this one. I can definitely feel more movement here. And you can probably hear that it's louder as I rock it. in comparison to this. Definite difference. And our 13,000 fits in here nicely. All right, on to the next one. So we're still in cylinder six, we're just adjusting the other cylinder six valve. So we gotta pop our lock nut loose. Actually, let's just make sure this one's tight. Before we move on, that's good. And again, we'll back this off. Go about that far back. Okay, that's good. And then always hold your adjusting, um, your adjuster down as you tighten this down, otherwise it's gonna move on you. No play in there as I wiggle our um, 
rocker arm here. Let's pull that back out. And again, you can hear more play. All right, so cylinder six is now properly adjusted. Uh, I think we just got to check this other intake cam quick, or this other intake valve quickly. Again, we're going 9,000 on intake. Yep, we're good. All right, cylinder six is done. Perfect. Let's do that one there. All right, that looks good for four. Let's see what we've got. Okay, we'll check our intake cam again first in hopes that that's okay. Intake feels tight on here. And that's because this is not cylinder four. This is cylinder five. This is cylinder four. And there's our intake play. So we have no intake play in here right now because the intake valve is engaged. And our exhaust play, these do feel tight in comparison to what those felt like, but now they're tight because our exhaust valve is engaged on cylinder six. So this is cylinder six, five, and four. Let's go ahead and check our intake valves on cylinder four. All right, a little bit of uh, resistance in there and no play. Check the other side. Wonderful. Intake valves are good to go and I'm already gonna guess that our exhaust valves are tight just because I can feel in comparison to how cylinder six felt. Yeah, I can't even get that 13,000th in there. So again, pop our jam nut loose. Oh, this one is tight. There we go. Take it back, a turn, and let's see what we've got. Now I'm not gonna bother checking where these were before. It doesn't really matter at this point. We know they were off. Now at this point, it's just a matter of getting it fixed. So again, we're shooting for a small amount of resistance in here, not a freely open. About like that, and then no play as we wiggle that. As we hold our adjuster in place, again, we're tightening down the lock nut and then snug it tight. Perfect, and let's see how it sounds. In comparison to this one, feels nice and tight still. Let's go ahead and pop this guy loose. See how that feels. Okay, a little bit of resistance and no play in between there when our feeler gauge is installed. Let's feel it. Wonderful. All right, cylinder four is done. All right, on to cylinder five. Looks like two. Huh. 
All right, there's cylinder five. So again, cylinder five, we have four, five, six, five is gonna be in the middle. Our intake valve should have play and our exhaust valve should have play. Okay, let's go ahead and get these adjusted. All right, we'll check our intake valves first. All right, intake valves are still good. So this entire bank, all six valves on the intake manifold felt great. And let's check our exhaust. And again, we're, we're checking the spacing between the tip of the valve or the top of the valve and this adjuster. Can't even get in there on that one and this one. Same thing. And again, we have very limited play on this as compared to after they're adjusted. So pop our adjusters loose. And no play. That feels good. And there we are, back to that audible noise where this one not so much, all right. Wonderful. So bank two, our front bank containing four, five, and six is done. I think we can throw our valve cover back on and uh, go on to the back bank. All right, so our valve cover is all prepped. New gasket, new spark plug, tube grommets. Just gonna wipe down those tubes quick. Again, that's one, two, three, four, five. All right. Our valve cover's torqued down. So cylinders four, five, and six are all done and good to go. We can pull this tape off of here and put our um, dipstick back in. Wonderful. We can put our coils back in. flashlight in the way. And I'm putting the coils back in their same hole where they were before. Unfortunately this valve cover is peeling pretty bad, the paint on it, otherwise it would be nice to have that nice and cleaned up. I was able to get this side cleaned up nice, but the uh, paint is pretty peely. Okay, I'm going to finish up with this later. Why don't we jump over to the back side now and uh, let's see what it's going to take to get our rear valve cover off. Looks like we got a big engine harness running over the top here. Um, let's take a look.
So down underneath our power steering pump on this harness sits a little bolt. You can see it right there. You'll have to loosen that up. And then we should, hopefully, be able to get this harness off of here. Gentle persuasion, and our cover comes right off. There we go. All right, so again, intake valves, and then on the back side, you guys can't even see it, is our exhaust valves back here. So they're going to be difficult, um, to say the least, to get to, but on a good note, 210,000 miles on this thing, oops, it's pretty clean looking inside, not sludgy, looks pretty darn nice, can't complain about that. All right, let's spin it around and find cylinders one, two, or three. All right, that looks like cylinder three. Perfect. All right, we'll start right in on cylinder three's intake valves and verify that we can get our 9,000 through there. So again, 9,000 feeler gauge. And uh, first of all, make sure we can feel our play and these, ooh, these valves feel tighter on exhaust on this, on this head. That's interesting. They're almost, I almost have no play on the exhaust side on, on cylinder three. All right, let's see what we got here for 9,000. Well, it seems like our intake valves might be a little tight on this head. Well, there we go. The design is a little bit, it feels a little different on this side. It's harder to get this between here, but there we go. So our 9,000 slide in between there, just a little bit of resistance again, a little friction in there, and beautiful. All right, let's see if we can get to that backside. Looks like it's gonna be a pain to, 
to reach. And again, we're going 13 thousandth on this on a cold engine. And let's see here. Now I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see this, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna adjust cylinder three, and then I'm gonna work down the line for one and two as well. We'll get this all adjusted up and uh, finish this up. So I'll be right back. All right, so you can see I've put a mirror back there. And right in the center there, you can see my feeler gauge in between there. And that's what we're adjusting. Okay, so all of our valves are now adjusted. Interesting enough, our intake valves were all in spec at that eight to nine thousandths of an inch. Our intake, or excuse me, our exhaust valves on the other hand were definitely out of spec. It seemed like cylinder head number two here, the front cylinder head containing cylinders four, five, and six, it seemed like they were tighter than the head on the rear of the engine towards the firewall cylinders one, two, and three. It seemed like there was a little bit of a difference, but that could also be because of the cylinder head design and how that feels overall. Uh, one thing to note here as we wrap this up, you're gonna want a set of feeler gauges. Now I just use like your standard set of feeler gauges, you know, it looks like that has all your gauge, feeler gauges in there. You might want to see if you can find yourself a feeler gauge that's got a 90 degree angle on it, or you know one that maybe looks like this. Uh, might be a little bit easier for you. Unfortunately, I didn't have the right size in, uh, in that style feeler gauge, but um, you know something like that might be a little bit easier to get in there because the exhaust valves are a little bit hard to get to. Um, especially because uh, on the back side. And then you're going to want yourself a mirror of some kind to be able to see what exactly it is that you're working on back there, noting that you are working backwards when you're looking in the mirror. But all in all, not a horrible job. The front is definitely much easier to adjust than the rear. Um, the rear valve cover is kind of a pain to get off, get that harness out of the way. You do have to, I believe you got to have that power steering pump out of the way to get that harness out. I mean, that, that bolt is buried underneath. I don't think there's a way around that. If somebody has a way around that, that'd be great to note. Uh, for me, it's not that big of a deal because that was coming off anyway to do our timing belt today. So from here, guys, I think that is the gist of valve adjustment on these Honda 3.5s. I'm gonna throw this valve cover back on here and then I'm gonna start ripping into the timing belt and water pump and then we'll bring this thing back into the shop at Wells coming up next week and we'll take some after captures of what that in-cylinder vent looks like with that exhaust valve timing. Our exhaust valves were tight. They would show up as an advanced event happening inside of our cylinder. Our exhaust valves were opening early and because they were tight, they were opening up more aggressively as well. So that's it. 
Uh, this is the end of the part two. Part three, we're going to do some verification and uh, look at those same diagrams that we looked at in the first part of this video. So again, if you like what you see, please guys give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I hope that this breaks it down a little bit. So if you guys are trying to tackle a Honda 3.5 in your garage at home for a valve adjustment, hopefully this definitely helps for that. So until uh, tomorrow night where we go over part three and we do some verification, we'll see you then. Happy wrenching everyone and we'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you.